run off a deck and knowing, or off a dock, knowing that they can't swim, but legitly they would dive in because they knew that mom, dad, auntie, uncle were out there with them. So I say that to say, man, when Christ tells us to jump in, we can rest assured it's not going to be the life vest of scripture that's going to keep you afloat. It's not going to be the life vest of your prayer life that's going to keep you afloat because sometimes when you're going through hell, your prayer life sucks. If we could just be real for a minute. Not all the time, but sometimes. How many of you guys have ever been in a spot and you've just been like, man, it's hard for me to pray right now. It's hard for me to dig in right now. I could read it, but I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. Well, listen to me. Those aren't going to be the things that's going to keep you afloat. The thing that's going to keep you afloat is the one who is in the water telling you to jump, and his name is Jesus. Right? It's the Spirit of Holy Ghost, and he is in that water. And if we would just take a second, if we would just take a second to dive right in when he says jump, my God, amazing things would happen and you would truly get to the point that you would go, God, you are enough. It's not this thing and it's not that thing that's, that's keeping me going. Lord, it's you. It's your grace. It's your mercy. It's your love. It's your forgiveness. It's you. Lord, you are enough. So God, help us to be those people. God, that are eager to have that childlike faith Knowing that we can't handle the situation, uh, uh, resolve the situation, fix the situation, or even make it better. But God, that we would have that childlike faith knowing that our daddy is in the water so that we can dive right in because you've got us and you, Lord, are enough. So God, we thank you for being more than enough for us. God, and I pray that a little bit of praise... God, we're turned to a whole lot of praise. And God, that my life laid out on that, that altar as a living sacrifice to you. God, I thank you that you declare that to be more than enough. So Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And all God's baby said, hallelujah, church, y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Guys, like always, man, if we could salute and give praise for the mighty men of their challenge, praise the Lord. It is always a, uh, a blessing and a joy to have them with us. Praise God. Man, um, um, before, we get, before we get going, one of our soldiers here last night had a dance. Praise the Lord. And I did, he did do was fly as all get out. So I just want to show off these pictures real quick. Okay. Check me, boy, out. Look at that watch. <laughs> yes. My man. My man. Even. He's even got that his dance. Okay, look at that. Shoot, we. That's a handsome rascal. Praise the Lord. B boy is awesome, man. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I love that dude, man. <laughs> Every time you drive, like, either it's before or after school when he's walking. Take these off because I can't see with them. Oh, we now we're talking. All right, that's good. Yeah, I, I totally side issue here, getting into the carnal, I guess. Um, yeah, last Sunday was super... No, don't, don't have to worry. I mean, although, let yeah, me bring it in a second. Last Sunday was uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, I had the privilege of watching it with my father-in-law. My father-in-law graduated from high school in 1958. Okay, So you know the kind of music that is his age. And he was, I mean, the man can still, I wish he was here this morning, still at, at, at his age, he can still dance that, to that doo-wop and that, that music from Big Bopper, that, all that. I mean, he, he just, he loved it. In fact, he told, he told Deb and I that, that in their high school, in the cafeteria, they had a, in the little auditorium, they, the cafeteria, they had a jukebox. And what they would do, lunchtime, after school, was they would dance. Nice. They just danced, that's what they did. And um, so we're watching the halftime show. <clears throat> and put that thing on, right? Would you, for the love of Pete, either that or get rid of it, one of the two. Give me a real one I can hang and throw. 
We good? Yeah, I can't. All right. There you go. Yeah, here we go. So we're watching the halftime show, and there's Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, and there's only two. So we're watching that, and I'm, and I'm, of course, we listened to a couple minutes, and I got no. That was after my time. And uh, so we, we, we muted it, and then Dad says, Alexa, play my music. So it goes into it. And what the cool thing was, we're watching everybody, all the dancers there, dancing right to the Big Bopper, okay? Right on tune. And it went from song to song to song. And, and, and then, and then we, so we went through his whole collection. Then he says, when, when did you graduate? I said, I graduated from 76. So we started playing stuff from the mid-70s. And guess what? Those dancers were still dancing exactly to some Journey, okay? And a little bit of Marshall Tucker Band and, and a whole mix of stuff that was just popping up in there. They were still dancing. And it showed me that, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, the beat's the same. And then I started thinking, because I've noticed, I watch stuff, okay? And in fact, I texted Frank. I said, hey, is that your music you listen to growing up? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, man, when they have, when they have you know, the bands from my age, they're going to have that wheelchair ramps and oxygen tanks up there, okay? But I noticed something, okay? And none of you picked up on it, okay? You watch the dancing up here. Still to the spirit, still to the music, okay? And I can tell the folks... Some that are in their 40s or so, because they dance like this, okay? Right? Where, where the cool folks, okay? We're back and forth, okay? We don't do that. No, that would hurt my, I'd like my headache all day long, right? Right? right we're, we're doing the, the back and forth, okay? Or and now you know where your music came from. That's exactly where it came from. Totally separate issue. I'm going to start from where we left off last week. Tell you what, the, the messages that your pastor has been preaching on, on purity have been just absolutely awesome. Awesome, awesome. I've been so blessed by it. And uh, it's just it just marinates all week long. I even went back and listened to a part of it again uh, just last night. I listened to a part of it. And he made a statement in there. He said, and he says, you've heard it all the time. So I'm going to repeat it so it isn't just him. He says, what we hear is what we're going to believe. And what we believe is what we're going to live. And that, that's so true. That's true on so many levels. My, the Steve's corollary to that is you become like what you hang with. You become like what you hang with. And there, there, there's a... Bible talks about a period of time when there was, a, there was going to be a famine for the Word. A famine in the land for the Word. And if there's ever been a time, and re really that was speaking about a, a different, different time there, but it applies to us today as well. If there's ever been a time where there's no excuse for not being able to read the Word of God, yeah. hear the Word of God. It's today. Today you can get, I mean, from podcasts to to online, to, to, to just however many different Bible versions printed online. The, the Word of God is available. But there's a famine, and it's, it's kind of a... The famine is not that it's not available, it's just that there's not the hunger. And I encourage you, if you want to become, if you want to live like the things you see preached, you need to hear, you need to listen, you need to listen. He used the scripture, and put that up if you would. First Peter two nine. And I love it. Which one did I ask you to do? Okay, that's it. it. Says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous lights. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, You are so, so good. And we gather together here in this place today as a, such a, a, a mixed group of people. But we have one thing in common, God, and that's our hunger and desire for You. And Lord, You make us one. You make us one. No matter what our 
background is, no matter what our, our uh, checkbook may look like, no matter what our education background is, no matter what our color is, uh, our, our taste in music, God, our ultimate taste and our ultimate hunger is for you. And I ask you today that you would anoint us to receive your word. We come against every spirit, every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of you. God, we ask you to bring our thoughts into captivity and the obedience of your word. We love you, we thank you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are a chosen generation, royal priesthood. This is, I, I love this scripture. Because here, this gives us a glimpse of just how precious we are to God. You are a chosen generation. I love that. I love that. Because it doesn't mean you just, okay, you're the luck of the draw. He doesn't say, yeah, you're what I got and I'm stuck with you. No, he says you are a chosen generation. That implies so clearly desire on the part of the chooser. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Wow! Wow! Priestly king. You're a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. And that word holy doesn't mean you're perfect. The word holy means set apart. It means set apart for a purpose. It's exactly what the word means. It means set apart from to a specific purpose. His own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. I love the... Yeah, I didn't put it up there, but the Amplified says that you're a uh, chosen race, the royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Like I said, this gives us a glimpse into just how precious we are to God. Know it. Again, I'm taking off from, from last Sunday. You're not just some tool in his box to accomplish some task. Sometimes we think that way. Like this whole there there are a lot of people in churches this morning that have that mindset that all that I'm just I'm just I'm just a screwdriver in God's toolbox. I'm just a ratchet set. I'm a five eighths ratchet. <laughs> God's toolbox. It's really all I am. Only good for five eighths, not good for, you know, nine sixteenths. Won't work for all you fraction math majors out there. Okay? Yeah. Scripture tells us we were purchased by Him. In fact, in First Peter, it tells us we were purchased with His blood, not by gold and silver that that's corruptible. Lost it through the years through. Collapse of the building, actually. Um, it was called Gleanings in Exodus. I think it was by a guy named Pink. Um, and uh, it, it went into an in-depth in study of all the things in the tabernacle, what it meant, you know, the gold and the this and the that, and how it was done, and all the symbolism there. And that's really great, and that's really neat. But the simple truths are the ones that we have to come to every day. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to look at a scripture here. And we have a very, very simple truth for today. Very simple truth. But as we, as we begin to be reminded of it, it's the kind of thing that will keep us going. Keep us going. Keep us saved. Psalm 139. Psalm 139 is probably one of my absolute favorite. He says, you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. Everybody say everything. Everything, everything I do. Everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. That thought that's there. You go before me and follow me. 
You place your hand of blessing on my head. Wow. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Too great for me to understand. I can... Everybody say the next word. Never escape from your spirit. I can... Never. Get away from your presence. When can we get away from his presence? Never. If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me. Will, will, will guide me. And your strength will, not might, not could, will support me. God, this is beautiful. I could ask, I, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. Even in darkness. Even when I ask the darkness to hide me. And for the light around me to become night. Even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. He is with me. Say that. He is with me. He is with me. This simple truth is the foundation, is the rock solid foundation of faith right here. Loved it! I was like, really? No. I loved it. That was that made my day. Okay? And we can kind of come up with a snarky little sarcastic thing sometimes. And uh, that was, that was. Where that came from, that was beautiful. I love it. Okay? But it's, you know, there's one, one thing. I mean, there's, there's places in Scripture you can read. Jesus was pretty sarcastic sometimes. Okay? He was. He was. Okay? But there was that snarky little hurtful thing that you, you know, you, you hope that they get what you said after they get home a little while later when they think about it. But you said it because it made you feel good. I got to you. you know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. Wow. But on the flip side, what about when you're in the checkout line and there's that, that, that girl standing there at the, at the Piggly Wiggly and she's had a tough day, you can tell, okay? It's just she's obviously got snapped at by somebody and, and uh, you're just another one in line there and she's tired and she's worked, you know, a double shift and, and you, 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 you give her a big smile and a thank you and you compliment her on that necklace she's wearing and uh, you watch her face just all of a sudden yeah. light up. Guess what? He's there with you then. Amen. You see, sometimes we preach these things, believe me, I know I'm guilty of it, as ways to like, he's there with you, okay? We, we preach it like Santa Claus, you know? Better watch out. Okay? He knows. David, behave. He knows when you've been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been. So be. That song's going to be on your mind all day. You're welcome. Okay? But he's there. Not just, not just when you mess up, but he's there when, you, when, 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 he, when he looks and he goes, Look! That's my daughter down there. Look what she just did. Angels, hey, what? listen, listen. Listen to her right now as she, as she lights up that person's day. Look, listen right now. Hey, guys, gather around. Listen, listen to him. As, as, he, as he makes this person smile who hasn't smiled because of their home life. Oh, watch, watch him. Watch him. Look, look at him. Who's it? Who's he look like? He looks like me, the Lord says. I can see, I can see the Lord up there high-fiving angels. Look, look. Yeah, he looks like me. That's my boy. That's my girl. They look just like me right now. Isn't that awesome? He's with you. 
in those times as well. How about when you write that little post on Facebook that further divides people? Or that Twitter feed that further alienates half the population? He's there with you also. You see, he's there with us all the time. Simple truths that make a difference. Knowing the, the symbolism of the cords of the tabernacle. Although it may be, okay, that's cool. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't get me saved. It doesn't, it doesn't help me tomorrow as I'm going through my day. And when I'm being tempted with something, it doesn't help me. It doesn't. But knowing that He's with me. Knowing He's with me. In every situation. Helps me. Helps me. So when I write that device, divisive post on Facebook or Twitter, it further alienates half of the population. Puts you in a team. Tells the world which team you're on. Unfortunately, we forget his team. How about when you come alongside someone who's hurting, feeling all alone, and you let them know you care and you're there with them. You simply come alongside them and you say, hey, I don't have an answer. I don't have a solution. I don't have, I, I don't have any advice to give you. But I want to let you know that I'm here with you right now so that you're not walking through this alone. That's the beauty of you guys. The Bible talks about a threefold cord that's not easily broken. I don't know how many of you are, there are but it's a whole lot more than three. And you've got each other. You've got each other. That's the, that's the awesomeness and the beauty of that. Guess what? The Lord is with you in every situation. Every situation, every time. And um, I, didn't, I didn't put the Scripture up, so don't think, where, did he, where is it? <coughs> But in Genesis chapter 3, we see Adam and Eve had, had failed. They listened to the wrong voice. goes back to what we talked about earlier. What you listen to is what you're going to believe. What you believe is what you're going to live. Okay? They were listening to the voice of the serpent in the garden. Okay? And they took of the fruit they were told not to take up. And in Genesis 3, 8 and 9, it says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Now, don't think for one minute that God didn't know. Where did he go? We're playing hide and go seek and I don't know where he is. And I've lost Adam. He knew exactly where Adam was. Okay. He was giving Adam the opportunity to turn to him, to come to him. He knew where he was. God was with them the entire time. But he was establishing the principle right here. Right very we see it in Genesis chapter three, we see the principle of repentance, of turning to God, of recognizing He is always with me, He's always there. I just need to acknowledge that and turn to Him. And he was there for him at that time. In Matthew 1, I'm going to read 20, 20 to 22 first. I didn't give you that one either. Okay, Then we'll come to 23. And it's a story about when uh, uh, Mary and Joseph, when the angel appeared to Joseph, was Joseph's not too sure what to do. His fiance, best way to put it in our, today's terms, is pregnant. Hmm. What am I going to do? Do I just kind of like leave her? Do I? What am I going to do here? And it says in Matthew 1, verse 20, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus. For He will save His people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, and verse 23 says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, 
and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God with us. He is with me from before he was born. Matter of fact, from before the foundation of the world, God established that He was going to be with His people always. To the point that when, when He became flesh in this child, the, the, the man, Christ Jesus, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Even when I don't feel Him. Even when prayer is difficult, like your pastor said a little while ago. He's with me. He's with me. Faith. Faith is knowing that God is with me no matter what. In all times. Through all times. So what? How's that help me? Let me ask you. Don't raise your hands on this one. Okay, this next series of questions. But think about them. Who has had thoughts lately that you are less than in some area? I'm less of a Christian. I'm less of a mother. I'm less of a father. I'm less as a husband. I'm less of a wife than I should be. I'm less of an employee than I should be. Less of a pastor, or a, a music leader, or whatever. I am less than. You battle with that. Because our adversary wants to constantly just fill our head with that. You're less than. You're less than. You're less than. You're not measuring up. You're not making it. You're less than. He's with you. He's with you. Who's been tempted lately by things that you know aren't good for you or for your walk with God? Don't raise your hands. Okay. You've been tempted. With the thoughts. Man. Sure enjoyed that last time I did it. Man. Tasted so good. Felt so good. Boy, that relationship was so good. Kind of seemed it. I know I paid a price, but... Mm, man. What about this one? What about that one? So the good thing about my glasses being off is all I see are blurs out there. Which is <laughs> always really good. He's with you. Satan doesn't give a rip about dead churches. Doesn't. They're already dead. There's lots of them. Just because you put a cross out front, sign out front, does not make you church. I could go put Steve Rhodes, brain surgeon, on a sign in front of my house. Okay? Do not come to me to have that tumor removed. Okay? It doesn't. Satan cares a lot about churches that are seeking him, representing him, doing their best. And usually those are the churches full of people that you think, man, that can't be a Christian there. But they're the one especially. You may picture him as the, the man with the hammer looking around for someone to sin. Waiting for kind of like playing whack-a-mole, you know? <laughs> waiting for him to sin. They're doing good today. They're going to pop up eventually. He said, BAM! <laughs> and some of us, it's like, BAM, 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 because I sin, I sin. And we picture God like that. And what to do? It beats us down. No. That's not our God. He is with us. First of all, the knowledge of Him being with me. The knowledge of that. Acknowledging. The Bible says, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will do what? Bible scholars. Direct your paths. And that's, oh God, how many times has that been just a beautiful thing? I love it. Today. God, God reminded me He was here and words of this song about every situation that can be content. He's enough. He is my Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my provider. That's what it means. He is my enough. Knowing that He's there. In every situation, in every storm. Remember, there was, we had Jesus on the boat. Back of the boat, middle of a storm. They're going across the lake. 
They're getting tossed. They're getting the storm is raging. Waves. They're they're afraid they're going to die. He's he's sleeping in the back of the boat here. It's like Jesus. And what do they say? Don't you care? We're about to perish. They forgot that he was with them, and he's in the back of the boat. And I don't think this is the Queen Mary, right, where he's like way back. He's just right there in the back of this fishing boat, sleeping in it. You see, his presence is enough. He doesn't have to be doing. Jesus wasn't standing up on the bow, going, you know, waves be still, and uh, you know, and and waking. Up. No, he was sleeping in the back of the boat, and knowing when I'm going through a storm, just knowing that he's there. The simple truth is what will get you through the storm. You all heard it before. When Peter walked on the water, God didn't calm the waves and make it glassy-like and wasn't like training wheels. No, it was in the middle of the storm. Waves, wind, the whole works. He didn't calm it first. He's Peter. Ask me. Yeah. And Peter, Jesus said, Come. Peter walked out, took steps. It wasn't until he got his eyes off of it. Forgot, got his eyes off of that Jesus that was right there. Then he began to sink. But he didn't call him the storm first. He is with you in every trouble, every situation, every storm, every temptation. Every temptation, he's with you. Don't forget that. And every act of Christ's likeness, he's there. Look at my boy. Look at my girl. Look what they're doing. He loves it. And in the darkness, as we saw with Adam and Eve, in the darkness of shame, after every bite of the fruit is taken, He's there. In the darkness of shame. You see, I think that's... To me, that's how I look at that, that part of the Scripture where it said, where it said that uh, if I could ask the darkness to hide me, what did Adam and Eve do? They hid themselves from the presence of God. That's what we do in our shame. In the darkness to hide me, in the light around me to become night, even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day, darkness and light are the same to you. So in the darkness of shame, after every bite of that fruit is taken, He's there with you. Not to hammer you, but to pick you up. And to say, okay, let's keep walking. You've turned to me. My mercy's on you. Let's go. Let's keep walking. The knowledge, the assurance, the awareness of his never ending presence is my comfort. It's my strength. It's my protection. And it's my hope. It's my hope. He is with me. Pastor, why don't you come? Let's stand. Let's stand. Whatever is going on in your life right now, He's with you. Wherever you have stumbled, He's with you. Wherever you're being tempted, He's with you. Wherever you've reflected Him, He's with you. He's with you throughout your day. He's with you while you sleep. He's with you when you're up, you're around, every time, every situation. He is with you. I want you to just close your eyes right now. And like a little child will do, small child, I, I have this image in my mind of a little child whose daddy walked up. And they just raise their hands to him and say, Here I am. You're here. I love yeah, your pastor already preached. Thank you, Lord, that when darkness tries to cover us, my Lord God, there you are. Lord, and I thank you, Jesus, like our pastor was saying, my Lord God, that you ain't there in the darkness, my Lord God, to point your finger in our face. You're not there to slap us around to tell us how horrible and how much it is that we messed up. But Lord, you are there to embrace us. You're there to lift us. You're there to pick us up. You're there to remind us who we are and whose we are, my Lord. God, you are there 
to remind us of the covering that it is that we have by the sacrificial lamb that it is that you did and you've made those uh, uh, um, uh, clothes for us in the blood of Jesus to put back on my Lord God so I thank you for reminding us of that Lord God and like my man said Lord that from the beginning or really before creation you had already determined that you were going to be with us Lord so whatever it is that we face today the, the things that we face on the low points of today the things that we face on the high points of today the things that we face that we just don't know which way to go Lord remind us of this message today that we're not alone you didn't send us into this big bad world to be alone but God that you are with us and right now with all eyes closed and heads bowed if there's anybody in this house or, or listening via Facebook who does not know Jesus and you want to meet the man who has already been with you if you desire to meet him just simply open up your heart right where you're sitting right where you're standing and the very God who has always been with you, you are getting ready to have your eyes open to see him face to face. To have this amazing encounter with Holy Spirit that will forever change your life. Are you still going to have low times? Yep. Are you still going to have confusing times? Yep. Scary times? Yep. But in those times, we're going to see the mountaintop that much